Hey everybody, Dr. Jason Pikin. Welcome to another episode of the Digestion Diaries. Sorry about the little busy background behind me. It, hopefully it doesn't throw off your uh, visual um, uh, pleasure so much, but I'm in my office and I figured I'd throw out a video about gas. Today's talk is about gas and why am I so excited that I needed to have this busy background and do this video in my office? It's because gas is a problem that a lot of people deal with that um, I wanted to rant about today because I have so much less of it. Here it is, it's personal diaries and if you're interested in digestion you probably deal with gas and the reason I'm talking about it is because I actually didn't even know how bloated, you can usually, uh, you can also say that, bloated or gassy I was until I started doing or um, eating on a ketogenic diet. So, what happens is I'm on day 11, 12 right now, I forget the exact numbers of days because I can't do the math, but what happens is my diet has shifted incredibly differently than what I usually have. I usually have a lot of vegetables, a lot of fiber in my diet, and I actually felt okay. Um, uh, but when I started living on a ketogenic diet, I actually realized that my okay was something that I probably was just getting used to, which was uh, probably a mild gassy feeling and the only reason I know that I was gassy in the past is because I'm so less gassy bloated now that it feels even better. Now I'm not sure how long I'm going to stay on a ketogenic diet uh, but it's a great experiment so let me clarify all these things for you. First, what the heck is a ketogenic diet? I've explained this in some other videos, but basically what it is, is a diet where you're eating 70% of your calories coming from fat, 20% of your calories are coming from protein, and 10% are coming from carbohydrates. So because your carbohydrates are going down, it typically means that your fiber is going down. And how does that relate to gas? Well, the most common ways that we produce gas or bloat is we eat this food that has starches, carbohydrates, fibers, and examples of those are anything from fruits and vegetables to grains and starches to sugars themselves. And what these foods do is they not only feed us, we don't um, only break them down and absorb them and we get to utilize them, but there is the microbiome the bugs that live in and on our body, mostly in our digestive tract, mostly in our large intestine, also eats the food that we didn't completely digest. So if you have all these friendly bugs that live in your gut, you'll have actually nice side effects, okay? They help you to digest your food, they help you to form proper, well-formed stool, and they make you feel good. They're part of your immune system. These bugs really help us out. But if you have unfriendly bugs, let's say too much yeast overgrowth, candida overgrowth, what they can do is they can eat this undigested food, these fibers, these starches, sugars, and they can create gas and bloat. Now, if that's contained within the large intestine, your body can deal with it and release it, and it sounds like a fart. Uh, that's what it is. Uh, and that's the reason why we fart. We, we, we create gas from this undigested food that the bacteria has worked on. And in the large intestine, again, not so bad. If those bugs that live inside our gut have migrated into the small intestine, they can create more middle to upper digestive system bloating. They can also disrupt the function of the stomach as well, which means you'll have less acid in your stomach, you're not breaking down your foods properly. I know I'm getting into a convoluted thing, but these are ideas that I play over in different videos in different ways. And I'm gonna summarize this again. If you eat a lot of starches, fibers, sweets, and they cause you to feel bloated or gassy. It's one reason is that you're not breaking them down. You're not able to digest them because you don't have proper acid in your stomach or digestive enzymes. The second reason is you are doing okay with digestion, but those bugs 
you either have too many unfriendly bugs, yeast, candida, or you have the proper bugs, the friendly bugs, but they're, they've migrated out of your large intestine into your small intestine. And so when they create the gases that are okay for your body in small amounts, they make you feel bloated. So what has happened is my diet has shifted from a lot of fibers and vegetables and some fruits to virtually none for a short period of time as I experiment with this high fat diet um, uh, to see how it makes me feel. And what happens? It made me feel pretty good. Now I don't like that because I really don't love eating on the ketogenic diet. Maybe I haven't done it long enough, but there's things that I miss. I miss having a big salad. I miss having a lot of vegetables. I've grown up on vegetables my entire life. Uh, well, you'll know if you watch the other videos, well, my entire adult life. Sorry about the phone. And I really enjoy them and they make me feel good, but what I realize now is they're probably creating a little bit of bloat. So what I'm most likely gonna do is stick with this ketogenic diet for anywhere from four weeks to five, six weeks, and then start reintroducing those vegetables again. And what I'm gonna do is use this as an elimination reintroduction diet. I usually teach people to use AI Paleo, autoimmune paleo, look for other info on that on my site and then use that as the elimination and reintroduction. In this case, I'm using ketogenic diet, which is still a very limited diet. I'm eating certain foods and I'm not eating others. And then when I break out of the ketogenic diet, I wanna learn something from it. And this is my lesson of the day. No matter what you choose to do, if you have bloating, burping, belching, too much farting, whatever, you're creating too much gas, and you want to experiment with a diet, the ketogenic diet is a great place to start. Contact me for more references and I'll teach you how to do it, or keep watching some of these videos. AI Paleo is a great way to start. Gluten-free is a great way to start. Whatever you choose, it doesn't really matter. A uh, Whole30, I'll throw a plug in for them. It's a great way to start as long as you don't make the big mistake, the huge mistake of doing this diet. It makes you feel a certain way and then you just go back right back to the way you were eating before. That's the big mistake. If you're eating a certain way and you're feeling better, well then, when you decide you're, you wanna test how other foods affect you, do it slowly. Introduce one ingredient at a time. Introduce at least one food group at a time. So if I've been on low amounts of vegetables, well, I'm gonna pick a group of vegetables like the cruciferous vegetables, the cabbage family of vegetables, which is cabbage and cauliflower and broccoli and Brussels sprouts. And I'm gonna start introducing a little bit more of them into my diet and see how I feel. If I feel worse, introducing a lot more of those than I'm used to on the ketogenic diet, which is a very small amount, well then I'm gonna note that and say, okay, my body doesn't do well with those foods. So the first thing I'll do is eliminate them again. Take them out and try something else and see how that makes me feel. And your goal is to not just mentally know, but hopefully even write it down and come up with a list of what foods are right or wrong for you. That list then you can get a lot of information from. One, you can just stay away from those foods. Simple. Or what I always like to do is you can take a few steps back and start doing the detective work on why you're not breaking down those foods. And that's what I do as a health practitioner. I help people with that. Um, there's so much information online. Hopefully you'll learn stuff here. But if you actually can uncover the why, why you're not breaking down those foods, why you're uncomfortable from those foods, you can actually and eventually reintroduce those foods back into your life without any consequence. Not usually if it's a true food allergy, but if the underlying cause is SIBO, there's a good possibility you can fix it, at least make it a lot better. If the, if the underlying cause is achlorhydra, you don't have enough stomach acids, you can work on that and get it better. If the underlying cause is stress, you can get that better. You get what I'm saying here? You can make everything better and instead of just narrowing your foods as you get older because you're getting more and more restricted, you can learn exactly what foods bother you what food groups bother you, and then learn why they're bothering you, and then 
become more adaptable and you can reintroduce a lot of foods back into your life. So this is the message of the day. I hope that all helps. Uh, have a great one out there and just contact me for any info you need. Bye.